Full wave rectifier. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying how Medi says it. Feeding into a full bridge rectifier. You know what, man? This is good. We're making progress. So in this video, we're going to be making a full wave rectifier, which you can see here. It's actually very simple. Again, just simple circuits, man. And <laughs> it's crazy because it has a great function. Basically, you're taking an AC input, in my case, a 12 volt sine wave coming out of this function generator. And then we're converting it into a somewhat DC output, which is what you can see on this yellow line here. So let's get into it. I think first we'll start with, hopefully you guys watched the last video, which was a half-wave rectifier. If you didn't, I highly recommend checking out that video because the half-wave rectifier is just a much simpler version of the full-wave rectifier because the half-wave one just uses one diode, whilst the uh, full-wave one uses four diodes. So a bit more complicated, but you should still be able to understand it. Uh, where do we start with? I think we should start with the physical demonstration of it on the breadboard. So let's go through that. Yeah, we'll do that. So first step is to take a sine wave, a 50 hertz sine wave from here, which is at this end, and stick it into my circuit, which I'll explain in a minute. All right, so let's have a, I'll show you what this sine wave looks like on the oscilloscope. All right, so here's the lovely sine wave, as you can see, a beautiful sine wave. So setting up the breadboard circuit is going to be a bit difficult. So you can just copy mine. Maybe just pause it here and have a look there. Yeah, to show you different angles. Yeah, I do highly suggest you try to set this up because this was difficult for me. <laughs> this is very difficult for me. So the red one is the input. The orange one is the, is the negative ground. So what you've got here, you've got the input here. You've got the sine wave now coming across this diode right to here. And then going across here to the capacitor and the resistor in parallel, coming across down this way. And then when it gets to this point here, have a look. See if you could just tell me quickly which way is it going to go. So obviously it could go this way when you're looking at the diode, right? Because you can see that the, the top end bit, the colored in diode bit. The blocking bit is there but remember that obviously current just wants to take the quickest route to ground so it doesn't make sense to go back around here and go in an infinite loop it's just going to go back along here and then to ground so let's just do that whole thing again comes in here goes this way comes along here across the capacitor and the resistor across this green wire now back this way and then down to ground on the orange lead then for the negative half cycle now so remember we've got a sine wave that's the positive half cycle. The negative half cycle now coming back in through the orange. And then where's it going? It can't go this way anymore because you can see that that bit's blocking it, right? So it cannot go that way. It goes up this way. And then now it's going to go across down this because obviously it can't go this way anymore because it's blocking. So it goes across this diode through this green wire and then back across the resistor and the capacitor. And the thing to note here is that each time, regardless whether it's the positive half cycle or the negative half cycle, current goes through the same direction across the load resistor and across the capacitor. Very important to, to, to know that. So across this diode, through this green wire, across the capacitor and the resistor, through this green, right? And then it wants to take the shortest route back to ground. So it's, obviously it's not gonna go this way and then back through the infinite loop again. It's going to go this way, across this diode, and then to ground via this one. And then the cycle repeats again. So that's how it's going through the circuit. It's a bit tricky to set up the circuit. Obviously, you've got like kind of a lot going on here. But at the same time, it's not too, it's not too difficult. It isn't. So let's show you the output now across this uh, capacitor. Do you know what? Obviously, we already know now. Hopefully, you watched the first video with the half wave. The half wave. Uh, rectifier why the capacitor is there so i'm going to keep the capacitor there i'm not going to show you it without the capacitor just know the capacitor is there it's a um, reservoir capacitor it's there to filter out the output hopefully you guys are aware of that i should really remove it ah okay i'm going to remove the capacitor let's remove it pretend it's not there it's just going across the resistor i should have done i should restart this but forgive me all right <laughs> so across the resistor let's look at the output across the resistor and so here's the output. You can see instead of it going as the sine wave with the negative half cycle, you know, down here, it's now flipped it so that they're all up here. And that's what you'd expect to happen. And that's what you see in my simulation results as well. So that is it now perfectly being rectified uh, the right way. Then if I take a capacitor and chuck that across it now, 
The issue is now, see look, I'm only using 12 volt sine wave. I don't know if you want to be just pulling out a capacitor and sticking one in if you was using mains voltage. <laughs> so that's one thing to keep in mind if you're using mains voltage. Damn, bro. I mean, yeah. This is... <laughs> it's much safer to use a... What am I saying? It's much safer to use a function generator. And there we go, look at that. <laughs> so now you got like pretty much a fully rectified DC waveform. I mean, just look at that. That is beautiful. So even if we zoom in 200 millivolts per division, 100, where is it gone? Look, I mean, it's just, it, okay, there. It's that, that, you know, that zoomed out is just pretty much a straight line. So 800 millivolts average, peak to peak 200 millivolts. But yeah, pretty much a DC straight line. So that's how it works on the breadboard. Let's go through it on the schematic. I think the important thing here when it comes to the schematic of it, and this confused me as well, is that there's different ways of drawing it, but it's all the same thing. So you can do it how I've done it here in the simulation, which is, in my opinion, I think this is better. This is this is better and easier to understand. Uh, however, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I th it's difficult. This is how I did it on the breadboard as well. Basically, uh, like this, but you can do it diagonally as well. I don't think it matters. We'll, we'll just I'll go through both of them with you, so at least you have both, right? So let's do it like this first. So here we've got a 12 volt um, voltage supply, right? Which is my sine wave coming in here. So I've got a sine wave coming in here. So what that means is that for the positive half cycle, we're going this way. We've got current coming here, going this way, and then coming down here. Obviously, current can not go that way because that's an open circuit because the diode is reverse biased. So it goes this way here, comes down to here, and then it comes through the load resistor because obviously it can't go this way through the diode. Comes through the load resistor, comes back around here to this point here, and then it comes and then it could technically, <laughs> you could go both ways, right? But it obviously just seeks the quickest path to ground. So if you just took the two paths, you've got one path this way, which would require going back for an infinite loop because <laughs> um, it can't go this way. So what it does is it just comes this way down here, through here, and then this way back to... In multi-sim, you have to put a ground here, but obviously it's just going back to the voltage source. So that's the first loop of it, right? Let's go through the second loop. So this, let's say this time this is positive and this is negative. So positive, negative. So now you're going to get current coming this way here into here obviously it can't go this way that's an open circuit so it goes this way here through the load resistor and like i mentioned before it goes through the load resistor both times the same direction right so it comes this way now through back to the same point but obviously this time it's not going to go back through just it's not going to go this way now through d4 it's going to come up through d3 and then find its way back to the negative side and that's it. I mean, it really is that simple. And so what that means is that for the positive output, uh, I've actually got it in a better show you here. So we've got positive, negative. So on the first cycle, you get this output here. Then on the negative cycle, you get this output here, you know, and then the same positive and then negative. And so the total output ends up looking like that. So you got ding, 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 ding. And that's it. I mean, it really is that simple. Let's just do the same thing again, uh, but for this more funnier looking one. So here they're using an AC input with a transformer. This symbol here is a transformer. So we've got positive, negative on the first cycle, and then negative, positive on the second cycle, right? So firstly, we come this way here, and then we come down here, through here, through the load resistor, again, positive, negative, back round this way, and then where we're going to go, we're going to go down here, through there. Let's just show you that again. So we always come back to this point. We go through the load resistor, this way to here, to this point, down this way, and then to the negatives. Okay, and then if we go the opposite way, come to this point here. We're not going to go this way because this would be reverse bias, obviously. So we come this way along here, go back through the load resistor. Again, positive, negative, same direction through the load resistor. So the load always sees uh, the same direction, doesn't matter. Comes back up to here. Then obviously technically we could go back down this way, but you would just go through an infinite loop. This time you go this way here, down here, and then back to the negative. So it's, just, it's, it's actually the same thing as this. It legit is the same thing, it just looks different.
And then the only other thing to mention is just the capacitor. I don't really want to go into like, you know, capacitors and how they work and current and whatnot. It acts like a reservoir. They call it a reservoir capacitor. Just know that it just smooths the output. It takes it from being this, which you can see here, which is dong, 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 right? Takes it from being that, and instead it makes it ding, 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 instead of the whole big drop down there. So you end up with this output here. That's what we use the capacitor for. So the larger the capacitor, then the, the tighter and smaller this will be, and the more kind of DC. Because if you think about it, like compare this, right? If you're, if you, I don't know if you had. I don't know, give me an electronic device, just go over an LED. If you've got current going up and then down, up and on an LED, you wouldn't really notice. But if you're a fan or motor, I don't know, was, you know, starting off slow, going a bit faster and then slowing down again. Starting off slow, going faster, slowing down again. Let's say you had a motor that was doing that. Versus a motor that was doing this. It'd be starting off relatively fast already. Getting faster, slowing down a, a tiny bit each time, right? So that is better than that. Yeah, that's what the capacitor does. And I mean, is there anything else really about four-wave rectifiers? I don't really think so. I think that's about it. So what we're going to do now is we, we now at the moment have this output here from our four-wave rectifier circuit. And so what we want to do is we want to push this now and make it even better. Can we get it to be in a full-on straight DC? And so that's what we'll see in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't. And you guys will see you in the next video soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.